Do you need a degree to get a job in programming? No. Do you get paid more with a degree? Was getting a computer science degree worth it? And what are the pros and cons of going with the self-taught route as opposed to getting a degree? We'll get into it. In my experience, no, you, you do not need to get a degree to get a job programming. 30% of working developers do not actually have a related degree. It's not like a barrier to entry to getting a job programming. It's one of the amazing things about computer science and software engineering is that you do not need to get a degree to get a job. You need to be empirically good at your job. I know for a fact that companies value experience much more than they do education. If you had two candidates, for instance, who are applying for a job, one of them had just graduated college, but they have nothing on the portfolio. Then you have somebody else who's maybe done an arts degree. They have four different websites up. They've maybe published an app in the app store. You'd much rather look at the guy who's published websites and has got an app in the app store rather than a computer science graduate who's basically just coasted through his degree and they've shown no interest in programming outside of the degree. That's not saying that your computer science degree is a waste of time by any means, but one of the most valuable things that you can do, and I've talked about this in previous videos, is actually be proactive and create things, create products, create services, create applications, show that you have an interest in you know, the degree that you're getting outside of the actual educational structural boundaries that have been put in place for you. The candidate with a degree plus a lot of published apps, they would look better in terms of a CV. So degree plus apps, probably a little bit better than person with just apps. And that's just basically an objective measure. One of the things that isn't really talked about as much, but I still think it's worth mentioning is the bias that you may receive when you either have a degree or you don't. The people who don't have a degree and who are working as programmers may look at somebody, an applicant, who doesn't have a degree, who has got you know, a portfolio of work more favorably than the person who's got a computer science degree because they relate to them a little bit more. They know what it's like to be in that situation. The same goes for somebody who has a degree, who's, you know, been in that student debt, who has worked their ass off. They know, you know, the, the late nights and the, the group chats and everything else that goes with getting a computer science degree. They, they may look favorably on a candidate who has a computer science degree as opposed to somebody who doesn't. So maybe something to factor in when you're applying for jobs it's, uh, it's gonna be luck of the draw here, but I thought it worth mentioning. Whether or not you get paid more when you have a computer science degree versus when you don't, I think in the negotiation process, it's something that you can mention. You can say, hey, I've got a computer science degree, I should be getting paid more for that, but I don't have any kind of metrics around you know, programmers who have a degree who are working in the industry versus who those who don't have a degree who are working in the industry and the kind of average or delta between those two. I think you can definitely make up for the lack of the degree with the experience and you can therefore charge more on that because companies are essentially looking at the value that you're going to add to the company and if your value is the same, then I should see no reason why person A would get paid more as opposed to person B. G given the kind of context of this video, you may be thinking, well, why would I even do a degree in the first place then? Because you can do basically everything that you need to do without a degree. And there are certain reasons for why a degree is good. And I have them listed down right here. First of all is, is networking. When you go through a university program, you have a cohort of people that you go through and it's a very valuable networking experience. It, it might seem like, you know, you're just making friends at the time, you know, you're doing assignments together, but the group of people that you meet doing that are going to be the same ones who are going to progress with you through into the workforce. Some of them may end up working at Google or Facebook or Atlassian or Palantir. Old Greg, who used to pick his nose during Computer Science 101, he ended up being the lead machine learning architect at Google. Like, who, who would have thought, you know? Good old Greg. Those are gonna be your kind of alumni and, and network later on. You'll be able to trade referrals. You'll be able to find out about different companies and learn different things. And if they go overseas, that's gonna be your entry point into the market over there. So there is a lot of intrinsic value in getting that degree and having those connections. And sure, if you are working full time, you're gonna get that experience as well, but that's gonna be kind of a smaller group. These people can go anywhere and you can also provide that value as well. Don't just take value, also be the one who gives some of that value back. There is a structured learning element to this as well. When you're talking about a degree, there is a program that you go through. There are certain requirements that you have to meet. Because of that, you don't have to worry about what you need to learn, that all that information is given to you. So if you're someone who needs that structure, if you're somebody who you know, needs a bit of a clearly defined pathway and excels in academics, and this could be a very viable option for you. It'll also give you opportunities to meet like on-campus events. You'll be able to meet recruiters. They'll, you know, a lot of the companies, they come to the universities to meet potential candidates. It'll also give you a well-rounded education. I've noticed through working with people with degrees, 
and those without is that the ones without degrees, when it comes to the more uh, data structure related topics or algorithms and that kind of thing, that's an area where they lack. So because they've gone through the self uh, taught route and they're focused on maybe specific things in order to get an application out they haven't prioritized a very well-rounded education those can be some of the things that slip through the cracks and so by going with a university you're ensured a more well-rounded broader education where you cover things like um, big O notation and uh, you know dijkstra's and pathfinding algorithms and all that kind of stuff things that you don't really want to learn, but you are forced to learn. If you're disciplined as a you know, self-taught programmer, then fantastic, you don't need to worry about that. For, but for a lot of people, it does tend to you know, slip through the cracks a little bit. You know, there comes a social stigma with going to university and it, it's a good one. You know, you're like, yeah, I'm going to university for software engineering and people are like, ooh, software engineering, you'll end up at Google. There is that kind of element of prestige as well. And once you've got that degree and you're like, yep, I've got a degree, that's also something to your credit as well. That's a fallback thing that going forward into the future you, you can say I, I have my degree and there are also some negatives that come with this whole experience as well first of all is the debt that is a huge one that's what puts a lot of people off going to university is an incredibly expensive experience especially if you're not doing it in your hometown you have to travel and board and you're paying rent and that kind of thing it can get incredibly expensive so for those people who don't have the option of, of living at home uh, who can afford to live cheaply then the cost of going to university is, is going to be huge the opportunity a cost of say staying at home and you know spending three months learning react and redux and front-end development or going into back-end or you know ios or app development and creating an app and then getting an internship or getting a junior position at some company that might be a much more valuable option and that's three months into the workforce as opposed to three years so with a lot of this advice you're really going to have to look at your personal situation your financial situation you know what really works for you i, I can't make this decision for you i can just give you some advice or you know personal experience uh, anecdotal of course uh, around this kind of thing you're also not terribly productive uh, when you're at university there's a lot of opportunity for distraction you're hanging out with friends you are making those connections which is fantastic you're making those memories but at the same time there is a lot of distraction you know you'll go out drinking and partying and Netflixing and while that is fun if you were say for example working full-time and you're really hustling and you're doing the self-taught route it's a lot easier to fall into complacency when you're studying because your priorities are getting good grades and not failing whereas when you're in the workforce, your priorities are a little bit different. You're having to deal with more real, tangible deadlines, I guess. Being self-taught, the pros, it offers a lot of flexibility. You can basically choose what arena of development or what vertical slice you want to get into. If you're thinking iOS is cool, you can jump straight into that or app development. It's more of a self-starter kind of mindset and that will probably serve you very well for your future as a developer. Considering that you don't have to pay university fees, if you go to maybe community college or you, you know, do free code camp. Um, the, the boot camps is a whole different other story. I'm, I, I won't get into that now. It, they, they can be good. I've known people who've gone through boot camps and landed jobs, but uh, yeah, this is a, that's a whole other video. So if you're going the self-taught route, you may be doing Skillshare. It can be a very cost-effective way to go about it. You can work, you can get some money, you can you know, afford to pay for yourself. You're not going into debt and you can also learn that on the side. Alternatively, if you've come out of high school, you can live at home and you can spend three months building an application, uh, maybe working part-time, whatever else. So it can be a very cost-effective route depending on you know, your situation. You can still get a job doing the self-taught route. Uh, this is, again, a, a good thing about computer science and programming and software engineering is that if you can do the job, you can prove empirically, I can do this, I've done this before, I can do this again, then you have a really good chance of getting a job. Uh, you're gonna beat somebody who's got a degree who's never basically touched a, a React project before because you've maybe done it three or four times. You're experienced with you know, the framework, library, sorry, and you can show that you've done this. It's really quite valuable. You're also able to get work experience. If you look at kind of where people are gonna be at after the three or four years that it takes to get the degree, if you're very quick and you're very self-driven and you get a job within three to six months, even a year of being self-taught, then in terms of industry, you're going to be two years ahead of basically everyone else who comes out of a degree. You're going to have maybe two years worth of React experience under your belt if you're doing front end, that's what I know. Uh, and you're potentially on track to become a senior. Like you can become a senior 
after between one to three years of React development, depending on the size of the company, how driven you are, if you can perform at that same level, then you know it's a potentially realistic expectation. Whereas if you get somebody who's just come out of university, they've just done a three year degree, they want some time off, they wanna go traveling for a little bit, or they hop straight into a, uh, a work position and all of a sudden they've got to learn React and Redux and AWS and the whole stack. It's a bit of a daunting experience. You know, you could come out very well uh, after having not done a degree. There are some cons, obviously, to doing self-taught development. And I mentioned this before, is you're gonna have gaps in your knowledge, potentially. Um, things like debugging or you know algorithms, big O notation. Obviously, this isn't relevant to every single company, every single project you work on, but if you are looking at getting into the FANG territory, um, a lot of these Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, wherever else, then you're going to have to learn about this stuff and be self-motivated and self-driven enough that you're going to be able to learn all of these concepts on your own. You're not gonna think, ah, oh, this is difficult, I'm gonna move on to something easier. You're going to have to have that drive to be like, no, I'm gonna learn this, I'm gonna learn it thoroughly, and I'm going to beat out everyone who just spent 50 grand on a degree. So you're gonna to have to be a little bit careful here, and part of that is having good mentorship. If you can find, you know, go on LinkedIn and find somebody who is self-taught, self-driven, and they ended up at a job at Facebook, Amazon, whatever else, potentially they'll be able to mentor you and they'll be able to direct you on what areas of development would be worth your time that you really need to focus on and get to grips with, essentially. So I think having a, a good mentor doing the self-taught route is vitally important because they'll be able to let you know, you know where to spend your time, essentially. So in terms of further research, whether you want to go and get a degree or you know you want to go the self-taught route or you know, you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you're like, I wanna get into programming, do I need to go back to school for a degree? There are a lot of other different um, YouTubers who've talked about this before. You can talk to other people in the industry. I've been a software developer for three years and that's my take on the whole matter. You can also have a look at some of the um, state of developer surveys. So if you're looking at front-end development, there's the state of JS, which is fantastic. I'll link that down below. The Stack Overflow also did a survey around developers and you can go and check out their demographics. In terms of finishing off this video, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you to make a decision, an informed decision based on your financial situation, whether or not the benefits that you'll envision getting from a degree are actually worth it. Um, for me personally, I'm really glad that I did my computer science degree. It gave me a structured path for which to learn development. I know I wouldn't have been self-motivated enough to go through all of the nitty gritty, especially the kind of mathematical stuff on my own. I would have just completely glossed over that, but I'm glad that I did it because it did make me a better, more well-rounded developer. Uh, also, the connections that I met there were just amazing. Uh, you know, my whole cohort was, yeah, they're the best people. I, I didn't regret it. I'm glad that I did do it. I think equally, if I, I hadn't done the degree, I would have found maybe going into computer science and, and programming quite daunting because not having that kind of back and forth with somebody, it's it's difficult, you know? One of my friends is currently learning how to become a front-end developer and he's really struggling with that lack of mentorship, that lack of kind of going through the same thing with somebody else, the, the problems that he's having. He's having to find out on his own and that can be really difficult, it can be really daunting, it can be really stressful and demotivating. If you are looking at doing this by yourself, I would highly recommend trying to find a community of people around you that you can you know, go through this journey together with. It's, it's very, very possible to go through and to be able to get a job uh, in the field. It's something you can do, so do not be discouraged, but do try to find other people who are going through the same thing so you can support each other and, and get, get everyone through this. So. Yeah, I think that'll be it from me. Thank you very much for checking out the video. Please like and subscribe if you like this kind of content and we will uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.